Hi, I'm Dr. Scott Augustine. For those of you that work in the operating room, you're well aware of the dangers of surgical smoke, the carcinogens, the bioaerosols, viable viruses. You're probably also aware that about half of that smoke can get taken up by the evacuators if you're using them. The question today is what happens to the other half? Now I've got my friend, the surgeon, this is Dr. Jones, who has volunteered his lungs to help us show you what happens to your lungs when you stand by an operating room table and work all day long. We're in an operating room ventilation laboratory. The room is a little small, the lights are a little bit small, but the overhead ventilation system, which you can see up here, is laminar flow and the plenum is full size and it's running. I'll just put a little smoke in the air so that you can see that it's working just fine. Let's just take a look at here. If we introduce some, some smoke onto this surgical field, see how it just goes down the side and away. Now, if we put a black drape here instead of a standard drape, just so it can be seen a little better, that is what the normal ventilation system should be doing, taking it, whatever's on the field, pushing it to the floor and out the side vents of the operating room. That's what normal looks like. So you can see that we've now turned on a forced air warming system and there's an inflated upper body blanket there that you can see as well as a standard blower, it's set on high. And we're gonna see what that effect has now. I'm gonna add some smoke just like we did a moment ago. And as you can see, it's rising up and circulating into a vortex under the surgical light. How does it do that? Well, it's a combination. First of all, there's rising waste heat from the forced air system coming up on the backside of the, of the anesthesia drape. The next thing is that there is a vacuum that forms underneath this light. Because of the downward flow of the laminar ventilation, a vacuum forms here, sucking that heat in, across the drape. And then the interaction of the rising heat and the fact that the cooler ventilation flow is coming down on this side creates the vortex. The vortex is a mini tornado that not only can pick particles off the floor, but most certainly can pick particles off of the surgical field, putting them into the breathing zone of the staff that's standing next to the table. So we're gonna take this HEPA filter and put it into the cartridge here, clamp it down, and give Dr. Jones some lungs. The vacuum pump is turned on and now we're sucking air from the surgical field past the mask and into the, the filter. Now what we're going to use to, to demonstrate this is actually carpenter's chalk. It's blue carpenter's chalk. And we're going to shoot it out through a powder coat gun, which is an industrial thing for shooting powder. The thing to remember is that carpenter's chalk is much bigger and heavier than smoke and it's way bigger and heavier than, than uh, viruses. It's easier to see, but it also won't stay airborne as long. And even at that, we'll find that it'll stay airborne for probably two minutes. So let's just shoot some in here, kind of where Dr. Jones would have been working. And you can see that with all the lights on, it's a little difficult to, to, to see it. So we're gonna have the camera swing around and we're gonna dim the lights a little bit and make that plane of laser light more of an, an effect. And let's try it again. You can see it swirling around, creating that vortex. And remember that that vortex is, is the, the, the smoke being held in the breathing zone of the staff. And these are big particles. These aren't the little particles that could stay for minutes and minutes. These will stay for maybe two minutes.
And now we have Dr. Jones's lungs. All of that was sucked out of the air. I told you at the beginning that we would not just tell you about the problem, but also give you a solution. And you're looking at it. Hot dog patient warming. Hot dog is an electric warming system that is more effective than forced air because it warms from above and below, but it also does not have waste heat and does not have waste air. So it does not cause the problem that we just watched. To prove that, we're gonna continue on with the demonstration. We've got another clean filter, which we'll put into the filter holder. I asked Dr. Jones to volunteer his lungs once again. And we're back to the chalk. Now we're gonna leave the lights on for this little bit because you will see that it's quite different what, what the view is. You can see that it's just going off the table just like it's supposed to and not up into the, into the field. We'll do this 10 times just like we did the last one. So this is a, a fair evaluation comparing the two things to each other. Let me do it one more time here so that you can watch it. And now we'll turn off the lights so that you can see what it looks like from the laser perspective. You may see it just down by the table a little bit, but you certainly don't see it coming up in front of the camera. And that was three. Let's just fast forward through the next seven. So we've done 10 of these as well. As you can see, essentially nothing. In our lab with the laser lights and the visible tracer particles, you can clearly see the vortex that forms and you can see how it could be a problem. In your operating room, it's not that way. With the bright lights and without added particles, it's very difficult to see, maybe impossible to see the vortex. One thing that we've learned during COVID though, is that just because you can't see it doesn't mean that it won't hurt you. So in this case, we've shown how the air can be sucked past a normal surgical mask and become a danger to the person standing there working every day. Thanks for watching.